Hey, writing class, welcome back to another lesson. For today's class, we're gonna be looking at lesson 28, parts B, C, and D. We'll leave part E for our next class on Tuesday after the long weekend. So let's begin. For uh, part B, we have five sentences there. And the title of this section is sentences that begin with a quotation. So each sentence starts with the, ex uh, starts with the exact words that somebody said. Our job is to punctuate the sentences correctly. Some of the sentences will be questions and other sentences will be statements. So we need to be make, make sure that we're reading through and ask and finding out if they are asking or if they are telling us something. So let's begin with the first one. So this is the way it will be written in your book. Number one is asking us, are you feeling well? He asked. Right, so our first job is to find the exact words that he asked, right? So those words are, are you feeling well? So around those words, I'm gonna add in my quotation marks. I'll use a different color just to show that, right? Once again, because it has the keyword asked, we know that this will be a question. When we add in our question mark, we don't need to add in our comma. So the question mark will replace our comma in this sentence. I need to make sure to put my question mark before the ending quotation. So now the sentence will be, we have our beginning quotation, are you feeling well? Question mark, closing quotation mark, he asked, and then after the word asked, I need to make sure I have my period. Now let's look at sentence number two. Sentence number two says, did you stay out late last night? His mom asked. So once again, our first job is to find the exact words that were said, right? Did you stay out late last night? Those are the exact words. So I'm gonna put in my quotation marks around those words. Once again, I have to now figure out if this is a question or a statement. If I look at the very last word, it says that he asked. This tells us that this is a question. So I'm gonna to need to have my question mark added. The question mark will go right before our ending quotation marks. So I'll add it right after the word night. So now the sentence says, I have my opening quotation marks. Did you stay out late last night? Question mark, closing quotation mark, his mom asked. And once again, at the end of the word asked, I need to add in my period. So now I want you guys to do and read over uh, sentences three, four, and five, and make sure that we're adding in our quotation marks, adding in our periods at the end of the sentence. If the sentence is a statement, you will need to add in your comma. And if your sentence is a question, make sure to add in your question mark. So you guys can pause the video now, and then I will meet you in part C. So welcome back guys, we're gonna be looking at part C. So I will read what it says in your book. So for part C, we are given six sentences. Once again, we have to underline the correct word. So in sentence number one, it says, the boys and the girls we're working in the yard, right? So we are naming two groups, the boys and the girls. So I'll read what it says once again in our book. So once again, listen to this sentence. The lions walked past the tigers. They were growling. We don't know if the word they refers to the lions or the tigers. Here's the rule about using the words they or them. If the first sentence names two groups, we can't use they or them in the next sentence. So once again, the rule is, if the first sentence names two groups, we cannot use the words they or them in the next sentence. So now let's look back at our first example. The boys and the girls were working in the yard. Right, so in that first sentence, we are naming two groups, the boys and the girls. That way, the next sentence, we have two options, 
the girls or they rake the leaves. So I'm gonna pause for a second and you guys can figure out or try to determine which one should it be. Should it be they or should it be the girls? Right, it needs to be the girls because if I write they, it's unclear if it's referring to the boys or the girls. So for number one, we're gonna circle the girls. I'll do one more example with you guys. For sentence number two, it says, the horses jumped over the fence. And then we have two options, the horses or they headed toward the grassy field. Right, we're naming one group, which is the horses, and then we have no other group that we're naming. So in the case of number two, the sentence can start with they. So we're gonna circle the word they. Because we are only naming one group, so they can only refer to the horses. So I want you guys to complete three, four, five, and six. So once again, make sure you're reading the sentences carefully. Is it naming one person? Is it naming one group? Or is it naming more than one group? And then you have to figure out which word to circle. So you guys can pause the video now and I will see you guys in part D. So welcome back guys. We're gonna look at part D. Let me just find it here. So you're going to make up sentences that name three or four things. In each sentence, you use the word and one time. So I'm gonna read what it says for sentence number one. For sentence number one, you'll make up a sentence that tells the three animals that ate dinner. Start the sentence by naming those animals and remember to use the word and one time. So we are given what the sentence should end like. So the ending of the sentence should be ate dinner. So I'm gonna erase what we have from part B and I'll do one example with you guys. So once again, we're looking at part D. So we need to make up a sentence that tells the three animals that ate dinner and then start your sentence by naming those animals. Right, so if we look at the picture, we can see that we have a monkey, a bear, and a tiger. So those are the three animals that are eating dinner. So we'll start by naming them. So we have a monkey. Then I'm gonna add in my comma, a bear. And now I'm gonna use the word and because it is the last word that is connecting the last two animals. So a monkey, comma, a bear, and a tiger ate dinner. Right. So if you look at the sentence, right, we have the three animals, a monkey, a bear, a tiger, and Right before the last animal, I used the word and, and then between the other animals, I used a comma, which would replace the word and. So now I want you guys to try to do sentence number two and sentence number three. So great work, guys, this week. You guys have been doing such a great job writing your paragraphs, uh, editing your sentences, adding in your quotation marks and your commas. So keep up the awesome work. I hope you guys have a great long weekend and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.